Look at that. Weather was great really all around the NFL today here in week five. It was a weird day yesterday. A lot of upsets around college football. It's been a strange day already around the NFL today. What's going to happen here in Denver, Colorado? Ted again is waiting for it with Brandon McManus walking a little bit taller this week. The job's all his. Broncos cut Matt Prater prior to this game. Off we go. Glad you're with us. And as is typical, touchback, especially here in the mile-high altitude. And so now the Arizona offense, 24th ranked. They played game one with Carson Palmer. He got a hit from Eric Weddle. He has a nerve issue in his right shoulder. Talked to him before the game. I'll tell you what he said. He's feeling good. That's the cliff notes. And Drew Stanton is in there, and he's been pretty good. Well, he has been good, Joe. The two times they've had to rely on him, of course, he's won those games. And as I said, coming into this ball game, the best thing he has done is protect the football. Handoff is to Ellington, who has been playing with a torn tendon in his left foot. They had the off week. That's got to help that situation. A gain of two for Andre Ellington, who was on that list of guys that Drew Stanton has to count on, along with Fitzgerald, who's been quiet. The guy on the end, they love John Brown, and Michael Floyd leads the league in yards per catch. That's a pretty good group to have around you as a... A quarterback who hasn't really played a lot of football for as long as he's been in the league. 30 years old, only his seventh start. Here's a screen, and it is for the tight end. Carlson's got a big play on the second play from scrimmage. 14 yards and a first down for Arizona. Well, it's set up very nicely. Of course, the Arizona Cardinals, they like to get the ball down the field. As a defense, you're worried about that. They run the screen play underneath. He's got linemen out in front of him blocking. It's a great way to start this game. Ellington left side's got a little room. Lowers his shoulder, crosses the 40 by a couple of inches when he ran into Danny Trevathan. And Danny is on the list of guys they have back. It's his first game back. He missed the first three. Did you know DeMarcus Ware was in Denver, Colorado? If you follow just the NFC, maybe you didn't know it. Longtime Dallas Cowboy, Terrence Knighton up front with him. And DeMarcus Ware still doing his thing, but doing it in thinner air. Second and six. Pass caught. Fitzgerald. And for Larry, that's catch number 11 on the season. First to the day, a gain of nine and a first down. Thought it was interesting, Joe, when we had a chance to visit with Drew Stanton yesterday. And... The fact that Carson Palmer went down early in the season and they were just coming out of training camp, it was really a blessing for Drew Stanton because he had gotten reps in, in camp preseason. He played well in preseason, and he has stepped in, and he's done a nice job in Carson's absence. And as you said, they got good news this week, and Carson is expected back sooner the than what maybe originally thought. 12 men on defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Not been a good start for Jack Del Rio's defense. Yeah, I had a chance to visit with Carson. And you can just tell by his mood that he's being honest when he said he is feeling better. The shoulder feels better. He made some progress two weeks ago. He took a step back last week. But he's actually been in Denver, which is something that Jay Glazer reported on Fox NFL Sunday. Seeing the guy that helped not only Peyton Manning, but others who have been through nerve damage. And he believes he's got the right treatment plan and is close. Handoff on first and five to Andre Ellington. He gets two, and let's go down to the field. And Aaron Andrews. And, Joe, just to add on what you were saying, and Carson going to the specialist here in Denver, as you mentioned, you spoke with him. He was out here before pregame warm-ups, throwing around a little bit, talking to the team orthopedist. He told me he's going to stay here today and tomorrow, work with the specialist a little more, and then hope during the week in Arizona he can get as many throws in as possible, Joe. Can't wait to get him back. Second down and three. Stands 2-0, Cardinals are 3-0, and the pass is caught out on the edge. 
by John Brown. Brought down by Tlaib. A gain of two, third and short coming up. That was an outstanding tackle by Akeem Tlaib, another guy who was acquired in the offseason because they get the ball quickly into the hands of John Brown. He's very quick, explosive. They blocked it up well with Larry Fitzgerald. And Akeem had him one-on-one. -on -one. He had to make a play, and he does. Third down. the running back Ellington and Andre Ellington out of bounds near the 25. Forced out by Chris Harris a gain of 18 on third and one. Well they put Ellington in the backfield and you see he runs the option route. It's zone coverage. He just hooks it up. Drops the ball right to him third and short and the excitement happens as soon as the ball gets in his hands. He's a dynamic player. And he runs routes. Bruce Arian says he runs routes better than any of the wide receivers. They haven't been able to utilize that as much because of the foot. But he's a special player. Play clock at four. Pass is caught. And wide open was Michael Floyd. And that's one he'd like to have back. Starting to make a move before he made the catch. And Floyd had some room to maneuver. There's John Fox. What's he done fourth year in Denver? He's won the AFC West the first three years. Added role in last year until once the calendar turned and the months turned to February, he got to New Jersey and then ran into a buzzsaw on the Seahawks. Second and ten. Stanton, incomplete. Fitzgerald closest to it, and he was held. They throw a flag right in the spot. Well, Stanton threw it, and Fitzgerald couldn't get to it, and it is against Denver. Yeah, against T.J. Ward. The flag came in late. You see right there that there's the grab. Number defense, number 43 defense. Spot of the foul, first down. There's a grab at the top of the route. Now, T.J. Ward is entitled to position on the field, and I think that's what the delay in the flag coming in was for, was whether or not he was in position before Fitzgerald got to that spot, but a costly penalty against Denver. So instead of the hold, it goes as a pass interference ball in the air, and the ball is placed at the nine. First and goal. Cardinals trying to make a statement on the opening drive. Carlson jumped. All start. Number 89 offense. It's Bill Levy. Just in case you're wondering, in the new world order of the NFL and all the flags that have been flying, Levy is at the bottom of the group of referees who have been reaching for yellow during the first four weeks of the year. To see if that holds up here today. Moves the ball back to the 14, first and goal from there. A yard. Brought down by Terrence Knighton. Well, Terrence Knighton, you watch Denver play, and it just seems like every week he's making an impact play. He's a, he's a big body, and he moves exceptionally well. He was voted a defensive captain, and you mentioned Demarcus Ware a little bit earlier. He's the other defensive captain on this team. It says a lot for the respect that he has in that locker room. Of course, captains are voted on by his peers. You're our captain. <laughs> okay. Ellington split out wide to the left. Top of your screen. And second and goal. End zone passes. Tips incomplete. Two guys had a shot at it. The first guy was the tight end, Rob Hausler. Then Michael Floyd was right behind him. It looks like Stan might have had an opportunity at this one. A ball that was just thrown a little behind him in a very difficult play to try to be made. But this is an area of the field where 
Arizona has had some problems being able to cash in with touchdowns. One of the things Bruce Arians talked about, we need to stay on the field on third down, convert. We need to get in the red zone and score touchdowns. And now they're going to have to call a timeout. Arizona calls a timeout before a third and goal from just outside the 15 early in Denver. Lions, without a heart, it's just a machine. One of the tactics when you play Peyton Manning's team, keep them off the field. Been a five and a half minute drive. Third down and goal. Selling out with a blitz. Pass is too high for Floyd. Fourth down. There weren't many left deep for that Denver defense. They were all up at the line for the most part. No, it was a good scheme there defensively by Jack Del Rio. They bring pressure inside, and then they bring T.J. Ward off the edge. So that's right where Stanton was moving with the pocket. He had to get rid of it a lot sooner than he wanted to. But to start this game, a good drive offensively by Arizona. Two young kickers in this game. Here's Chandler Catanzaro, a rookie. He's 9 for 9. He's 10 for 10. From 33 yards. Now what Arians wanted into the red zone, settling for three. Now we'll see Mr. Manning next. Sponsored by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. We're going to see Peyton Manning, who is sitting at 499 career touchdown passes. Only Favre got over 500. 508. The numbers are better for Peyton Manning when you compare the two in those major categories. It's a windy day. It's going to be interesting to see how the ball reacts out of the hand of Peyton Manning. We know this, the ball reacts, it gets knocked off the tee. It's going to be kind of a crosswind. If anything, he's going to be throwing into it, but kind of a cross away from the Arizona bench toward the Denver sideline, and it's blowing pretty good here in Denver. Well, it is, and so Peyton, being the veteran that he is, he'll know that, and if he tries to throw any outside breaking routes to that direction you know he'll be real careful and make sure coverage is not tight because the wind could very well be a factor on some of those throws Caldwell waiting for him and he's still waiting so here we go from the 20 yard line Peyton Manning now this is a team Troy that was basically scoring 38 points a game a year ago they had a better running game last year and right now they're number 11 at 25 points per game so they're really looking to get on track and there's the counter 499 for Peyton Manning as he will start in the shotgun to begin his day this one to the sideline flag is thrown Tapping the feet down for a catch to Marius Thomas. And they're waiting for their big receiver to kick it into gear. Flag on the coverage with Cromarty. And he got their feet no in. Foul for holding. First down, Denver. They just pick it up. Well, that was an outstanding throw by Peyton Manning. You got Antonio Cromarty who's in coverage and then. You've got underneath coverage as well. You had to fit that ball in, and Peyton makes a beautiful throw to start this game. No backs in the lineup right now for Denver. Marius Thomas good for 19 to start his day. He's been averaging 47 yards a game. Pass is caught. And that's Julius Thomas, the tight end. He's about as good as there is. Maybe even including the guy in New Orleans. That one good for five. And here are some of the guys that Peyton Manning will look for downfield. Well, of course, Wes Welker now back for his second game. Demarius Thomas has a nice catch to start the game. He has struggled through the first three weeks. Good to get him involved early. Omaha! <laughs> I heard Omaha. Pass is out of the reach. 
of Thomas and Manning as he usually does let it fly before Thomas got his head turned back around. Well what we're seeing right now Joe as you mentioned they're going to the empty set formation which is a little different than what they had shown to start games over the last three weeks. They have tried to establish the running game. They have not had much success. It's a very difficult defense to run the football against. They come out throwing the ball and that's what you would expect. Here they come with a blitz. Monte Ball in there to help protect. And a beautiful little flip from Manning to Emmanuel Sanders. Good for nine. They bring pressure. You can expect it on third down. Monte Ball, he steps up. He protects the inside. They run the natural pick. Across the middle of the field versus man coverage and just an outstanding next job of execution there by Emmanuel Sanders. Little delayed handoff to Monte Ball. He's good for two. Sam Acho made the stop. So who do you look at defensively for the fifth ranked defense in the NFL, the Arizona Cardinals? Calais Campbell. And then those two big corners that they trust and really rely on to eventually get a pass rush. I think in a lot of ways it's those corners that allow them to do so many things up front defensively and it's one of the reasons why they're so good against the run because they can man up on the outside. Julius Thomas slow to get off the field. We'll take a break. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. By Pizza Hut's Bacon and Cheese Stuffed Crust. And by Target. Expect more, pay less. Low 70s on a perfect day here in Denver. Vegas, Vegas, Vegas! Hey, 25 is well out. 25 is out. 22 is sale. 22 is sale. Right here, watch it. You hear the wind hitting the mics. You can hear plenty of Peyton on second and eight. Pass caught Walker. Forced out of bounds by Gerard Powers, a gain of seven. Well, Joe, you go back and take a look at the injury to Julius Thomas. Sam Acho, the linebacker, he comes around. You see the leg whip there, and that, that does not look good. You hope that Julius Thomas is, is going to be all right. He's been a heck of a player. He's in there now. So he took one play off, and he's back. That was ugly. Third and one. Hand off for the first down. That's Monte Ball. Campbell on the stop, a gain of three. You know, Julius Thomas coming into this game, Joe, because of all the different looks that Arizona can give you, he's a guy that they think they can take advantage of, that they can split him out. In fact, now he's lined up outside at the wide receiver position. But they like the looks of this, and they feel like they can do some things with him in this ball game. Not that, that he's not always a part of everything that they do, but especially this week. Here's Ralph that can't make the left-handed catch. Second and ten coming up. Powers was there with Welker. Those two have been working against each other. Patrick Peterson typically will go with the top threat on the outside. Who's that for Denver? Is it Sanders? Is it Thomas? It's been Sanders to this point. Yeah, Demarius Thomas is, is an outstanding player. Emmanuel Sanders has impressed me with all that he's been able to do here in the early going for Denver. Second and ten, it's Thomas. Perfect throw from Peyton Manning. Working on Chrome Marty. And a completion of 24. Well, they swing Monte Ball out. They got one-on-one -on -one with Antonio Cromartie on Demarius Thomas. He's able to get him behind him. He also had Wes Welker in the slot. And Peyton didn't see him, but a little bit easier throw to Welker. But he lays one up for Demarius Thomas, and he's off to a great start today. So they're inside the red zone. They've scored points every time they've been inside the red zone this season. 44 of their last 44 trips in. Manning doesn't miss down here. Pass is low, but Thomas stands inside the 10. 
When Peyton Manning, when you're Peyton Manning, you've got 499 touchdown passes and are about to become the second guy ever. You get in the red zone, you you know how to get it to that last 10 yard area. Yeah, you know, and he's obviously been doing it, you know, knowing how to do that for a long time. And it's a lot of touchdowns. You know, Bruce Arian said, hey, I'll give him one in this game, but he needs nine to tie Brett Favre. He said, if he gets nine and ties Favre, I'm not getting on the plane to head back to Arizona. <laughs> He may be serious on that. Manning keeps it, floats it, too far. It's only a matter of time who will catch number 500. This time, pass was intended for Demarius Thomas. He's been a frequent target for Manning on this opening possession for Denver. Now it's third and five. Manning has 320 touchdowns in the red zone of his 499. Touchdown passes. Congratulations to number 18. Really nice route here by Julius Thomas, but the coverage wasn't all that bad. That ball's just perfectly placed. Julius Thomas is able to make a catch. You saw the shot there of Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator for Peyton in Indianapolis for 13 seasons. He's seen that up close so many times, and he sees it again here today. It's the sixth of the year for Julius Thomas, and it's the 500th in the career of the league's only five-time MVP and future Hall of Famer, Peyton Manning. Broncos up four. Well, now a chance to go over and look at the pictures of that first possession for Peyton Manning. He's done it well since he came into the league in 98. He's done it with class and a great face for this league. How about number 500? This was no easy pitch and catch here. No, it's Julius Thomas. He's running the out route. They clear on the outside. Tony Jefferson is in coverage, and he actually is in good coverage. The ball's just laid out to where only Julius Thomas can make a play. And you know, it was just a matter of time here today for him to come up with 500. He gets it on the first drive, and just a great job by Peyton and that Denver offense to start this game. I thought you were going to forget to hit the button over there and get it up to 500. Good job. <laughs> From the 20, swallowed up is Ellington. Von Miller, who they really missed. At the end of last season, especially in that Super Bowl, he was suspended the first six games, played nine, then tore his ACL. Yeah, really, Joe, if you look at this defense and you take the guys who aren't any longer with the team and then existing guys that had to change positions, eight new starters defensively from the one that started in the Super Bowl against Seattle. A lot of changes. They hung in there well against Seattle two weeks ago before their bye. Pass is incomplete as Stanton hit the deck. He lost his footing as he winged it toward Michael Floyd. It's third and 12. There's Jack Del Rio, who took over for Dennis Allen, who was the previous defensive coordinator for the Broncos, who was fired this past week as head coach of the Raiders. Well, Jack Del Rio, a former teammate of mine, to, had an outstanding playing career. Of course, the head coach for a number of years, having to face Peyton Manning all those years when he was the head coach at Jacksonville. Blitz, third down and 12. Wide open Fitzgerald. And a first down and a big one for Arizona. A completion from Drew Stanton for 33 yards on third and 12. Well, this is one of those shots down the field, and the reason that it's there is because Del Rio dials up the blitz. They bring a keep to leave off the corner, and Ellington picks it up. He gives Stanton time, and then you've got Larry Fitzgerald down the field. That's a great job 
of getting out of a hole and coming up with a big play. Season long for Fitzgerald, 33 yards. They'd love to get him more involved. Stanton, he's got his man off the hands of John Brown. He's their new home run hitter downfield, and the little guy could not pull it in. Good throw. Really good throw. John Brown just couldn't quite make the adjustment. Stanton sees the safety. He doesn't want to lead him too much to the middle, so he leads him back over to his right side of the field. John Brown, guy runs 4 3 40. I mean, he can flat out fly. Just unable to quite make the play, but that's another one of those shots by Bruce Arians. He's always been known for that, going back to his days when he was the offensive coordinator at Pittsburgh. And I don't think anybody takes more shots than the Cardinals do. It's a fun offense to watch. Ellington runs into the gut of Trevathan. Gain of three. Baseball tomorrow. Troy will be in front of the big screen. Waiting for game three of the Dodgers and the Cardinals in St. Louis. On Jin Ryu against John Lackey. It's why they got John Lackey from Boston at the deadline. Tomorrow at 9 Eastern p.m. on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, that was a tough one for the Dodgers the other night. They came back and turned the tables last night's series tied in a game apiece. Second time out with the play clock winding down. We'll take a break, too. Oh, come on. Really? Fred Aldis? Let's hear it for the boy. Awful. Fred Aldis works the uh, sound you hear on your television. Best guy in the business across any NFL game. And listen to the crowd on third and seven. after letting that ball go. He's tough. Well, he had to be on this play, Joe. He hangs in the pocket. Malik Jackson was the one who came right up the middle. He held it as long as he could and put the ball up. Just a good job of concentration there by Larry Fitzgerald on the other end of this throw to be able to pick up that first down and keep this drive going. The numbers that Fitzgerald's piling up. Directs him straight to Canton when he hangs it up. On first down, off the hands again. Larry Fitzgerald made the catch on third down and seven. They had to call a timeout. Fitzgerald was confused. And when he came back to the sideline, his head coach, Bruce Arians, let him have it. Yeah, he gave him an earful, as you're going to see at the end of this and you know that's one of the things that these players really appreciate about Bruce Arians I'm not so sure Fitzgerald did right there but he's very honest and even going back to camp last year he treats all these guys I don't want to say he treats them the same but he holds them all accountable and you can tell he was unhappy with Fitzgerald but he came back and makes a play on third down they fake it to Taylor floated toward the end zone and broken up good coverage downfield pass was intended for Michael Floyd with a coverage by Chris Harris, and he was in better position than Floyd. He had another one of those shots down the field. And, you know, Drew Stanton was with Bruce Arians when he was at Indianapolis, when he took over as the interim head coach. And when he got the job here in Arizona, he brought Drew Stanton with him. So even though he hasn't played a lot of football for a guy who's been in the league as long as he has, he knows this offense and he knows where to go with the ball. Third down and 10. Just got it away. And maybe they didn't. Flag in the area for delay of game, and let's see if that's what they got. Back judge comes up and speaks with Levy. Watch the play clock in the background. Arizona called timeout prior to the play clock expiring. Timeout Arizona. Their final charge timeout. So they just haven't been able to get into a position, Arizona, to get on a roll offensively. They got down into the 
red zone the first time had to kick the field goal and now they're having a tough time getting plays away and so you can see John Fox not happy instead of a third and 15 it'll remain third and 10 but out of timeouts for the Arizona Cardinals but I like what the Cardinals are doing so far yeah I do too I mean they're they're having some success moving the football but as Bruce Arians told us yesterday they've got to be able to come away with touchdowns when they get down to this part of the field because Denver sure made it look easy and as good as this defense is and as capable as they are of covering people you know this offense is explosive so you've got to believe Denver's going to put points on the board. So little side note to this because Arizona's out of timeouts they can't challenge a play the rest of the first half so they have their challenges but you have to have a timeout which is the punishment if you are not rewarded with a reversal. Third down and ten. Blitz. Stanton hangs in. Pass is broken up. Intended for John Brown. Broken up by the rookie and first round pick Bradley Roby. Well you see the stack here by Arizona. Three wide receivers so you don't get the jam on them and they go man coverage. Denver does. He has a chance if he's able to lay that ball more towards the sideline. Contact before the ball arrives. That's why Arians is hot. You could see the contact by Roby and the outstretched arms of John Brown. But no call. 48 yard try. The rookie they found one in Arizona. He's now 11 for 11. It's a one point game. Here in Denver, minute 41 left, first quarter. It took overtime. But Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints get a victory. 35 of 57, 371 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. So the Saints have stumbled out of the gate. Cam Newton in a come from behind effort in a win by Carolina over Chicago. And it's special teams again for Philadelphia because after piling up a 34 to 7 lead on St. Louis, the Rams had a, the ball down by six with a chance to win it at the end of the game. Well, what the Eagles have done on special teams the last three weeks has been incredible. You know, to have touchdowns in, in each of the last three grand, in each of the last three games is a great job by that special teams unit. Out of the back of the end zone, so drive number two will start at the 20. Talk a lot about Bruce Arians. He's had some ride. The flowing locks of hair is the quarterback for Virginia Tech in the early 70s. First head coaching job at Temple. He was 30 when he got that. NFL assistant coaching career stops in Pittsburgh, Indy. And what he did in Indianapolis, he was only there a year. He was the offensive coordinator, then took over. By the way, that's, that's all the same guy. The three pictures of Bruce Arians. <laughs> he took over, Arians did, for Chuck Pagano in 2012. And he won the AP NFL Coach of the Year for what he did. Andrew Luck had a lot of, to do with it, but he ended up getting him in the playoffs. Stepping in for Pagano, and then that emotional return by Pagano. And he got this Arizona, Arizona job off what he did with Indianapolis. Yeah, he would. He was. He had resigned himself to the fact that he would never get an opportunity to be a head coach in this league, and it was an unfortunate situation for Chuck Pagano that afforded him the opportunity to show what he was capable of doing. Did a great job with a rookie quarterback and Andrew Luck, and he's been outstanding here in the desert. Arians turned 62 on Friday. This one after a completion to Sanders is incomplete for Sanders. Third down coming up. Third and four. Now, I talked a little bit earlier, Joe, about this Denver offense and the fact that they've been trying to run the ball through the first three games of the season. And, you know, Adam Gase, their offensive coordinator, he said they they got exposed in that Super Bowl against Seattle, and they didn't have an answer for what Seattle was doing against them. Pass caught ball, and he is tripped up short of the line to gain. And it's Powers, who's been busy with a nice tackle to force a punt. Yes. Rod Powers, he's been he's been active. Well, and then trying to make a tackle like that on Monte Ball, I mean, he was close to picking up the first down, and they come up with a key stop. So to get off the field against this Denver offense that on their prior possession went down and came away with a touchdown, that's a 
That's a good job defensively by the Cardinals. Britton Colquitt will punt. Gets to punt. In this higher altitude. Wisely was Ted Ginn Jr. It takes a nice Denver bounce and hops out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the 16 and a half on Fox tonight. Sunday fun day. All new episodes of your favorite comedies all leading to the season premiere of Mulaney. Starts tonight 730 Eastern 630 Central here on Fox. We talk about the job that Bruce Arians has done and you know, last year it was a 10 win team. It was one of those things that happens every now and then you win 10 games and yet it's not enough to get into the postseason. So this Cardinals team obviously off to a great start here this year but they finished up strong last year too. Since week eight of last year they've gone 10 and two best record in the NFL and they've survived some injuries. Especially defensively. We'll get into that next time they're out there defending Manning, a gain of one by Andre Ellington. That's it for quarter number one. It is October 5th. It's a gorgeous day in Denver. We've already seen history from Peyton Manning. We're also seeing a good game. Back after this from your local Fox station. What did you see at practice, Troy, with Peyton Manning? <laughs> Uh, I saw a lot of what I always see when I watch a Peyton Manning led offense and essentially him running the practice. You know, I've never seen a quarterback do more at a Friday practice than Peyton Manning. Second and nine, handoff is to Ellington. Almost broke free. Third down coming up after a gain of six. The NFC West has a different feel to it. There's all that unrest out in San Francisco. Jake Glazer saying even if they win the Super Bowl, Said this on Fox NFL Sunday. Jim Harbaugh is not coming back. Now that remains to be seen, but that's from Jay. Seattle, they play tomorrow. Arizona's on top. Well, it's such a tough division. It wasn't that many years ago where it was probably the weakest division in football, but well, they've got some strong defenses, and the Denver Broncos have had to face it. Fitzgerald had it, lost it, no catch. And that was knocked out by Chris Harris. And it's the work of Harris that spoils an Arizona first down. That's a good throw by Drew Stanton and one that you don't see Larry Fitzgerald not bring in very often. But right at the last minute, Chris Harris is able to knock it out. But typically, Fitzgerald, when he goes up and makes a play on the ball, he's so physical with the catch that you're not going to knock it out quite that easily. But a good job by him. Bastadil, first week back, the left footer just got it away. His purse. And the rookie doing all he can crosses the 40. Broncos have not had much success returning punts so far this season. Burst came in with an average of 3.8. That was that's going to bring his average down. It was three. Peyton's first touchdown pass today was number 500. Here's number one. To Marvin Harrison, who else? In his NFL debut while playing against Miami in September of 98. Talked to him on Friday, asked him if he remembered his first touchdown pass, and he called. He said, yeah, threw a fade route to Marvin Harrison, and a lot of those 500 touchdown passes were fade routes to Marvin Harrison, and 112 touchdown passes to Harrison overall which is the number one duo in NFL history. Peyton Manning to Marvin Harrison. And they're the milestones if you go by the 100s. Harrison, then Wayne, then Adai. Demarius Thomas. So in this short time, he's over 100 passes here with the Broncos talking about Manning. Now, I, I couldn't believe that last night when it was showed in our meeting room. And I guess when you have 55 touchdowns in one that season, helps. that helps. That's a big leap forward. <laughs> Bronco scored 606 points a year ago. NFL record, he's picked. Intercepted, and there's Powers again. Jerron Powers has got his second of the season as he stepped in front of Wes Welker. That was that throw, though, to that direction, Joe, that we talked about, that if the wind may affect it. I don't know if that's the case here. But a ball that was thrown behind. First turnover of the day. It belongs to Arizona.
Today's Game on Fox is sponsored by the Lincoln Motor Company and the first ever MKC. By Visa Checkout, the easier way to pay online. And by Corona, who invites you to find your beach. The wind has died down a little bit since our unofficial guide of the officials' pants and how they were <laughs> reacting in the breeze earlier in the day compared to now. But it's whipping down there, and Manning just threw a pick going right into the wind. Pass caught wide open. Ellington, he's to the 40. Let's go back to the interception by Powers. Well, Gerard Powers is in good coverage. They're trying to get the ball to Wes Welker. A little pressure, he's got to slide, so then you got to drive the ball to the outside. I don't know if the ball just got away from him, if the wind was a factor, but a ball thrown behind versus man coverage. Powers is able to turn and make a play on this ball, picks it up, much like a receiver would. That's just an outstanding job on his part, and a good job defensively. They force the punt, the previous possession, they get the turnover, setting up their offense with good field position. First down at the 40. They fake it end around, they hand it off to Ellington, who over the right side gets two, off to Kurt we go with a game break. A lot of comebacks around the NFL today, a big one by the Saints. They were down 24-13 before sending it to overtime, and then winning it on Kyrie Robinson's 18-yard jaunt. 37-31, they knock off the Bucks for their 10th straight home win. Joe Troyner. Yeah, they don't lose in the dome very much, Curtin. As you look at the NFC South, you see Carolina with a win today over Chicago. The only team over 500. Second and eight. Here's Ginn. Well played to leave up to make the hit. I know you visited with Akeem. He was shocked that he wasn't brought back to the New England Patriots. Yeah, he thought he was going to be signed. In fact, uh, even the Broncos, they had planned on signing their own corner, Dominique Rogers cromarty Price got too high. They decided to let him go, and Akeem Tlaib was available. And they make a nice trade-off. They lose DRC. They bring Akeem Tlaib in. We saw him last year against the New Orleans Saints and Jimmy Graham. I thought it was as good a corner play as I've seen in a long time in that game. Third down and nine. Down he goes. And the sack off the edge, Von Miller. That was a freight train that wasn't going to be stopped or slowed down. Well, Von Miller gets a great jump on Bobby Massey, and so he's able to get the edge. Comes around and then gets Drew Stanton in the pocket. They needed a defensive play with great field position that the Cardinals had, and they get it from Von Miller. Three trips now into Denver territory for the Cardinals. They have six points. They can't keep it out. That was Jerron Brown who whiffed on it. How about Von Miller? 44 games played in the NFL. He's got 38 sacks. His last one. Stop that last drive. Talk about this Arizona defense. They're without three key pieces. And have been all year. Ronnie Hillman in the backfield. Pass is broken up. Demarius Thomas was the target. Antonio Cromarty was there for Arizona. Well, good cut coverage on the outside. There's a little grabbing going on, some contact. I think it was a good non-call. And you talk about this Arizona defense, Joe, and because they've lost so many players, Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator, has had to rely on more of play from his safeties. Three safeties on the field now. He at times will implore four. Going to throw it. A little shove at the end of that. And that's going to be offensive pass interference on Sanders. Gerard Powers was back there again. He's already got a pick, and Sanders shoved him right in the back. He's just trying to help break up the play. He was more defensive back there than pass he was. Interference. Number receiver. 10 offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. I talked a little bit earlier about Emmanuel Sanders and. The job that he's done, and Peyton Manning and him really developed some chemistry right away. I mean, you watch Peyton throw the ball to this guy. The ball comes out with great anticipation. He runs excellent routes. 
and he's been phenomenal through the first three weeks of the season. He's averaging over 100 yards a game receiving. Had a big game two weeks ago against Seattle. He's been very impressive. They tried taking another shot there, but just good coverage by Powers. Only run it three times at the Broncos. Arizona number four in the league against the run. Second down, pass is behind the caught, and there's Sanders. Manuel good for 13 to make it a little better on third down. Now you talk about the fact they haven't run the ball much in this game, Joe, and to go back to what I was saying earlier, Adam Gase really felt like they got exposed against Seattle in that Super Bowl, that once they were able to stop their th three wide receiver offense, they had no answers for them. And they had to develop something with their two tight end and three tight end packages so that if their wide receiver package got stopped, they had some answers. That's really what they had focused on through the first three games of this season. But they don't want to beat their head against the wall trying to run the ball against this group. Here's a blitz. Bulls loves to blitz. Pass caught. There's Sanders again, and he had to reach, stretch. They're letting this play go. This is a touchdown, at least for the moment. It looked like he got shoved down, but as of the moment, it's a touchdown, and let's look. Way behind Peterson, does anybody get him? Yes. I mean, Peterson comes up and shoves him in the back. Was his knee up off the ground when Joe, that looked, happened? Yeah, it looked to me like he was back on his feet. Yeah. yeah. Before he gets touched, that's going to be the question. We usually, usually see this in the reverse. Was the knee up? First of all, I think it looks like a clean catch to the ground. That's another part of this. It's a touchdown, so they'll look at it. And then was his knee up? The when the hands of Peterson hit him in the back. If his knee's up, it's a touchdown. If his knee is still down, which I think it is, there will be no touchdown. We'll get the call when we come back. This game is sponsored by The Judge from Warner Brothers Pictures in theaters October 10th. During the play, the receiver was down when he was contacted by the Arizona defender. The ball will be placed at the Arizona 47-yard line, first and 10, then. So instead of a 77-yard touchdown, it's overturned. It's a 30-yard catch by Sanders at the Arizona 47. And here's the confusion prior to the snap. Well, there's confusion prior to the snap, and, and even when the play was in motion, it seemed like Arizona kind of stopped on the play before Sanders even caught the ball. It was just a strange set of circumstances that happened both prior to the snap and then when the ball was in play. And we're fortunate that that one was not a touchdown. This is the third year that they have gone to reviewing every scoring play. And that's good news for Arizona because they're out of challenges. At least cannot challenge because they don't have any timeouts. Meanwhile, it was Dayon Buchanan, number 36. You'll see him sprint off the field, the rookie. First round pick out of Washington State that started the play and then almost catching the defense napping for a long touchdown. Instead, it's just a long completion of 30. Second and seven. Pass is caught. Down at the 30, good for 14 yards. Yeah, tell me this guy doesn't make a difference for an offense. He's as good as there is and as good really as there has ever been playing that slot position and giving his quarterback a place to go with the football. Just an outstanding route, creates tremendous separation. Easy pitch and catch for Peyton and Welker. It was no coincidence that Demarius Thomas got off to a slow start because he was in the slot early. Now he gets to go back outside. Tries the left side, and you can see why these Cardinals are so good against the run as the safety, the rookie. 
Buchanan came up to make the play. Yeah, I really like what I've seen of Buchanan here in his rookie season, just his fourth game, and they use him in the linebacker position. And he's a physical player, considering that he's a defensive back. I mean, he gets in there, he takes on offensive linemen, he shoots the gap as he did there, and he's done a nice job here in the early going of his first year. Cardinals hanging in there with Peyton Manning in this Denver offense. Now Hillman to the left of Manning on second and 11. They back out the blitz. Thomas makes the catch. You're not going to stop him. Touchdown. Number five on one. Thirty-one yards, and he shoved Larry Foot to clear his path to the end zone. Yeah, Larry Foote was the only one who really had an opportunity to try to make a play on Demarius Thomas. He initially is showing that he's gonna come up on the blitz, but he pulls out and he's there to then make a play on the slant route to Demarius Thomas. He just fails to make a tackle. And it's a 14 to six game. You hold them down, you hold them down, you hold them down, and then they strike and they strike quick. Thomas, 31 yards, 14-6. Broncos on top. Marius Thomas, they've been waiting for him to kind of kick it into gear. And that seems to be happening. 31 yards for his second touchdown of the season. First one to Julius Thomas, next one to Demarius Thomas. And another touchback for the first-year kicker, McManus. Well, Demarius Thomas, he's a, he's a big physical receiver, just a quick slant versus man coverage. He's able to get away from Crow Marty, and then he takes it all the way into the end zone, and then he does the old Lambeau leap, and he gets a little wet. But the thing that Demarius Thomas, as you talked about, Joe, the, through the first few weeks of the season, he was having to play a little bit more of the slot position, and I know the coaches really felt that it kind of bogged him down a little bit, and they felt that he would have a good game coming into this game because he was just focusing on doing the things that he does. Pass is caught. Carlson, the tight end, and man, did he get hit. Brandon Marshall, who was the starter in place of the injured Trevathan for the first three games. Saturday, two of the nation's top quarterbacks collide to Pac-12 showdown. Marcus Mariota, how good is he? And the Oregon Ducks take on Brett Hundley. And the UCLA Bruins. Coverage begins 3 Eastern only on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. That is this coming Saturday. A lot of upsets, as you said, in college football yesterday. Unfortunately, one of them was to UCLA. Here's Ellington. Five of the top eight teams lost yesterday across college football. UCLA lost late last night to Utah, 30 to 28. There's Stanton. His partner in crime in the quarterback room, Carson Palmer, said, when I met him, I walked in the quarterback room, and I just pointed, guys, and I said, if you don't have your own nickname in three seconds, I'm giving it to you. And he pointed to Stanton, and he, Stanton was like, what? And he said, Nighthawk. You're Nighthawk. <laughs> Nighthawk. <laughs> Third down and one, and the handoff is to Hughes, trying to fight for the first down, and he came up short by inches. It's fourth down. Well, Bruce Arians is taking a hard look at this, but that defensive front for Denver, they're a big group. Big guys inside. They just got no movement there in the middle. Arizona unable to pick up a third and short. That's a big time stop by Denver. So now fourth down and less than half a yard. Zastadil, who's been bothered by a bad groin, hits it. It's Burse. One of his better ones of the season. The rookie, after a 44-yard punt, has a 10-yard return. And there's an injury to one of the Cardinals. So they check on the player. We'll try to get a number. How about the Dallas Cowboys? They had that come from behind win a couple of weeks ago in St. Louis. Down by 21. 
They were forced into overtime. Missed a kick at the end of regulation today that would have won it. But look at some of these numbers in Romo. One of his bigger days. They haven't had to rely on Romo so much this year. Well, no. You, I mean, you see the big three right here in the day that they've had. DeMarco Murray's off to an unbelievable start to this season in a contract year. Leads the league in rushing. Really, the group that hasn't been talked enough about has been the defense. They, they've been really good. And not a lot was expected of that of that unit coming into the year but here the Cowboys are four and one now they've got a tough road game next week at Seattle but they have surprised people with the start that they've had to this year it's Justin Bethel who is down for Arizona here's a good looking play that doesn't do much a flag is thrown as Sanders made the catch short gain of two but a flag flies out of the defensive backfield Pass interference, number 88, offense. Ten-yard penalty, repeat first down. Second offensive pass interference called in this first half against Denver. It's Demarius Thomas. That's interesting because if this pass was behind, he's engaged in Cromartie before Emmanuel Sanders gets the ball, but it looked like the ball may have been a backward pass, and if that's the case, then it's a running play and it shouldn't have been called. I'll tell you, Emmanuel Sanders, in talking to Peyton Manning, as active as he's been, he said, we're still finding ways to get the ball into his hands because he's so explosive. We've seen that on a variety of plays here in this first half. Pass dropped in and out of the hands of Demarius Thomas, second and 20. Coming up. So when we talk about the injuries for the Arizona Cardinals defensively, first of all, they lost their inside linebacker Daryl Washington to a suspension for the year. They lost Darnell Dockett to a knee and pass rush specialist John Abraham, who had 11 and a half sacks last year. He's out because of lingering issues with concussions. Yeah, I mean Todd Bowles is his, you know, he's done a great job of finding creative ways. As I mentioned, a lot of the ways he's doing it now is with safeties, but they're still a top five team. This is tipped off. Back the other way, Campbell. Campbell makes a move down to the five. A flag is thrown. Peyton Manning made the tackle as they were trying to set up a screen. And a kid who grew up in Aurora, Colorado, Calais Campbell, almost had a touchdown against the team he grew up idolizing. There's what no a moment that would have been. A low block, first down Arizona. Well, Calais Campbell works up the field, but then he sees that they're trying to get the screen in behind him. And rather than continuing to rush upfield, he just reads Peyton Manning and he falls back underneath this throw. That's a great job by Calais Campbell, a former tight end in a Denver suburb. Grew up idolizing Shannon Sharp. That makes Shannon proud. Senior year, he had four touchdowns as a tight end. He showed his hands. Peyton Manning saved a touchdown as he brought down Campbell. Here's Ellington. And just like that, a touchdown. He went around to lead. And Andre Ellington, good from five yards out. And what a turnaround that is. That's a great job by the Cardinals offensively of capitalizing on the great field position and the turnover. You see the job that this offensive line does, but Ellington sets it up beautifully. He's one-on-one -on, -one on the safety, and he's able to make, or excuse me, it was to leave the corner, but he does an outstanding job of making that guy miss. First of the year for Ellington. That had to feel good. A guy who's played tough through the torn tendon in his left foot. And he's got his first touchdown. And yeah, Michael Floyd, he also with a big block that springs him. Well, that was a big turnaround there off the turnover for this Arizona team. Terrence Knighton is slow to get off the field, but he's fine. So he's to the sideline. Catton Zero's in to make this a one point game with under five to go first half. Zone has hung in there. They've been waiting for mistakes. And while Peyton's thrown two touchdowns, he just threw his second pick that led to seven points. Well, there's Calais Campbell. He's the defensive end. 
And you're going to see the job that he does of getting up the field. He's trying to rush the passer, but then he recognizes they're throwing the screen in behind him. That's just a, that's just a guy making a play and recognizing what an offense is trying to do. And then, as you mentioned, I mean, he's got some ball skills. He played the position tight end, and he comes back and he makes the catch. Oftentimes, that's the hardest thing to do for these big guys. But what a big play for this Arizona team. How about this? Denver came in having given the ball away only twice. And the opponents had come up with only six points off those two giveaways. They get seven here off the second pick by the Arizona defense against Peyton Manning. And just some more about Calais Campbell, who, along with idolizing Shannon Sharp, idolized and who didn't in the area at the time, Terrell Davis, the running back, and then studied a lot of film of Neil Smith, the former Kansas City Chief and then Denver Bronco. He's a big guy like Neil, 6'8", 300. And and he's an athlete. Yeah, yeah, coming off a career year last year, had nine sacks. How about this game? 14-13 under five to go first half. Next week, America's Game of the Week will be the Red Hot Dallas Cowboys at the Seahawks. That's late. The other matchups, good games. Packers, Dolphins, Patriots, Bills. Panthers, Bengals, Lions, and the Vikings. Bears and Falcons. And these Cardinals will host Washington. Here's the NFC East. All that starts next week with the Fox NFL kickoff show at 11 a.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Followed by Fox NFL Sunday at noon Eastern on Fox. Omaha! Monte Brown bottled up in the backfield as he lost two and a half. And this crowd's getting frustrated. First guy there was Matt Shaughnessy. The Matt Shaughnessy does an outstanding job on that play. And look at the job that he does here at, on the outside. And just beats his man immediately. Monte Ball, they're trying to run the stretch play to Shaughnessy's side. Got no chance at all. Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Vegas! sideline and a brilliant catch by Sanders and I think we're seeing firsthand who's becoming Peyton Manning's favorite target yeah he's uh, he's been quite an acquisition you see the route running ability there how he can change directions as quickly as he does and Peyton Manning that, that's about as much movement as you're gonna see out of him but he's able to at least slide to his left and he delivers the ball right on the money third down and one First down carry for Monte Ball, but a flag is down. Looks like it may be a hold. Holding, number 74 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Look at Orlando Franklin, who is the former right tackle. They moved him inside because they tried to get a little more physical, a little bigger on the interior of this offensive line. Yeah, again, it goes back to what happened in the Super Bowl. I mean, you think about the influence that that game had on this organization. Orlando Franklin moves inside because they, they realize, hey, we need, we need a bigger anchor in the middle. and We can't have people take advantage of us inside. And, and that's why he's made the transition then to the left guard position. He got his arm around the neck of Dayon Buchanan. Good call for the hold. Third and 11. Big down here for Denver. Pass is caught. Long way to go. Ball won't get there. Matthew was the first guy there. Martin was there as well. And Larry Foote had to clean up. A gain of nine. It's fourth down. And here's Arizona about to get it back. No timeouts. Down by one. Well, still with uh, over two minutes to play. Plenty of time, even without the... Even without the time timeouts to work. Again with a fair catch after a 39-yarder. And Drew Stanton, named Nighthawk by Carson Palmer, was a second-round draft pick by Detroit back in 07. He made four starts in Detroit. It was two and two. Over 1,300 days between NFL starts, he took over 
And a game for the Cardinals at the Giants. He's 2-0. Oh, and he's got his team in the ball game here in Denver. Yeah, I said it coming in, Joe. The thing that he's done a great job of is protecting the football. He didn't have an interception either in the preseason, but he's capable of throwing some interceptions. You know, when he's been the starter in some of those other places, not many starts, he has thrown interceptions, but that has not been the case with Arizona. Out to his right, he throws it away, and if he's in the pocket, that should be a flag. Was he outside of it? DeMarcus Ware was breathing down his neck, and they will throw no flag at second and ten. Yeah, the ball was on the left hash, or excuse me, it's in the middle, so essentially if you're able to get outside mm. of the hash marks, they're going to give you some leeway on that, try to protect these quarterbacks as much as they can, but that was close. There's Carson Palmer. Nerve issue in his throwing shoulder, second and ten. Stephon Taylor delayed handoff. Makes a move. Gets a couple of it's a couple of extra yards. He came up. Raheem Moore, a gain of six. Well, right now, Arizona's, you know, you want to go down and get points of your own, but you've got to be real careful about giving the ball back to Peyton Manning with all three of his timeouts left. So that means a big third down's coming up on the other side of the two-minute warning. Arizona with the ball, trailing Manning and the Broncos by one. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Crowd into it on third down and four. Just three men on the rush. Pass dropped. Wide open and dropped by John Brown. The rookie found a spot, just could not make the catch. Now Denver looked like they were going to try to maybe bring some pressure. You said it, Joe. They only brought three guys on the pass rush, and there's the hole within that defense, and Stanton throws a nice ball and one that, that Brown certainly should have caught to keep this drive alive, and now they give the ball back to Manning with plenty of time. And three timeouts. First. Hauls it in inside the 15-yard line. They'll mark him at the 14-yard line. What's coming up at halftime, Kurt? Thanks, Joe. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, Brian Hoyer and the Browns complete the largest comeback in franchise history. The Panthers get off the snide against the Bears, and two overtime nail biters in New Orleans and Dallas will catch up on all of today's action at the half. Yeah, after a fun college football day, certainly an interesting fun day in week five, including this one. Minute 48 to go. Hey, 25! 25! 50! 50! Omaha! Go! 86 yards to go for Peyton Manning, and that's a big chunk of it! Might be all of it! Down the sideline! One pass, touchdown! Demarius Thomas! Antonio Cromarty is in man-to-man -man coverage, and as he turns to try to locate the ball, Peyton Manning lays this ball out beautifully, but that then creates some of the separation. Demarius Thomas right up the sidelines, and this has been an offense that has not had the big plays in the passing game that we've grown accustomed to seeing with a Peyton Manning-led offense, but that was a huge play right there, right before the end of this half. 86 yards. With the extra point coming, this is to make it an eight-point game again. Well, that drive didn't take long. The only question was how long would it take Demarius Thomas to run 86 yards? The answer, 11 seconds. Well, when you come up, Joe, as the Arizona Cardinals like to do, they, they've got outstanding corners. Pro Marty is a three-time Pro Bowl player. He's made each of the last two Pro Bowls. And when you lock up like this, man-to-man, -man, you're going to, at times, give up some big plays. And Demarius Thomas, who, as we've talked about, just got off to a slow start. But it's just a matter of time.
before he's going to get going. He's too good of a player. He's too explosive to hold down for very long, and he has been outstanding here in this first half. More yards and five catches today than he had over the first three games. Coming off a bye at 141 yards on 13 catches, one touchdown in three games. As you said, Wes Welker coming back really spreads out a defense, and now here today, how about the effort? With five catches, 165, two touchdowns, and a long of 86. Ted Ginn waiting for the kick. Now there's time for Arizona to do something, albeit with no timeouts. Start at 20. You know, it was an outstanding route by Demarius Thomas. Good protection inside. You know, nothing in the middle in Peyton's face, but this ball is is placed beautifully knowing that you've got the one on one look and then it's just a matter of you said Joe is how, how, how long is it going to take him to get into the end zone Rashad Johnson couldn't catch up so now we'll see what Stanton can do he's made some good throws had a couple drops on him so far and this isn't a good throw. Too high for Ellington. And when Cromartie got back over to the bench, somebody's going to have to put the ear pads back into his helmet. That's a job for Mark Allmeyer, the longtime equipment manager of the Arizona Cardinals. Well, you go back to the third down drop by John Brown. You know, he makes that catch. The Cardinals are able to keep the ball, and you know, maybe it's an entirely different look than the one we have right now. Second and ten. Here's a near pick. Gliding in there was Harris as he almost snatched it away from John Brown. Yeah, Drew Stanton is very fortunate that that was not intercepted because Chris Harris really baited him. He's He's watching the quarterback. Stanton thinks he's got man coverage on the outside. The corner's going to continue to run with Floyd, but instead they call that a trap defense. He shows man. He comes off of it. He's there to make a play, and generally those balls are intercepted. That touchdown tied a career long for Manning. Meanwhile, he's about to get it back if the Cardinals don't do anything with this. Third down and ten. Pass is caught the short of the first down. It's Michael Floyd who's been quiet, and it's Aqib Tlaib who has shut him down. And the punt coming. I, I know the percentage is virtually, it, it is zero. But you know when you're Bruce Arians and you don't get the first down on third and ten, no matter where you are on the field with what Manning can do with three timeouts, maybe a 1% chance you think about trying for it? He does have a good defense. Flag is down. Now another. And Burst gets to the sideline. Gets a block. Cuts back. Knocked down inside the 40. And as far as net yardage, after a 37-yard return, there's not much of a gain, and it's a penalty against Arizona. And now the net gain is going to be basically nothing. Well, to answer your question, <laughs> Bruce Arians was a fortune teller, <laughs> right. you know, which I think he may be. There's a flag down on the far side There as was well. an additional foul holding by the receiving team, number 36, during the kick. Denver has the option of replaying the down or having their penalty re uh, enforced. We'll check. Well, that's going to make Bruce Arians wonder why Denver gets a pick of what to do with two fouls on the play, one against each side. I mean, Mike Pereira is going to join us from Los Denver Angeles. Denver elected to replay the down. Fourth down. Denver's going to replay the down. Mike Pereira, will you please make sense of this? I'll tell you why, Joel. It's because Denver got the ball with what you call clean hands. They had not fouled before the change of possession. So then the, since the foul occurred on the run afterwards, they get the choice on the kick play to offset the penalty, or they can keep the ball and be penalized for there. Obviously, they're going to choose the offset. 
Yeah, but the other part of it is they get a big return from Burse, and now by making him re-kick, Burse has got to try and do it again. And he's out of bounds at the 31-yard line. That's the part I don't get. Well, not only do you have to do it again, but then you're dealing with time on the clock. You know, more time comes off the clock, less time for Peyton Manning to work. Yeah, so I don't, I don't agree with with John Fox's decision on that one. The ball was going to be inside the 40 of Arizona. And now after the re-kick, the ball is back at the Denver 31 with under a minute to go and three timeouts. Now Bruce Arians just hoping to get out of this half down no more than eight points. Mike's going to jump back in and clear it up. Please put my mind at ease. After this play, first down from the 31. Manning, pass incomplete. That gives us a chance to have you clean this thing up, Mike Pereira. Okay, here you go. So, since Denver got the ball and hadn't fouled before they get the ball, then they had the choice to keep the ball if they wanted to, but be penalized for their holding uh, penalty, which would have taken it back from the spot of the, the hold back toward the goal line. So that's why they chose to offset it. They would not get the return. Perfect. You're like one of the great closers Thank in the you. game. Now, why didn't he just say that to begin with? Yeah. That's why we have Mike Pereira. We're not smart enough to figure this out. That's not going to sit well with the crowd. Ronnie Hillman loses one. When you start bringing in clean hands and how you got the ball and where you have to enforce it, that's why. So good to have Mike to clear that up. And it basically, because of the hold on Denver, erased that big return by Burse. And Denver right now looks content to only lead by eight. Blitz. Manning throws. Welker the catch, but he's short. Arizona without a timeout, and that's the way this first half will end. An eight-point game. And even with the two touchdowns, to Demarius Thomas, one to Julius Thomas, two interceptions, and the Cardinals are right in it in a one-score game. It's 21-13 at the end of an entertaining half here in week five. We'll step aside. Kurt Menefee and the guys for the Visa Halftime starts right now. about to get underway and it will be the offense of the Denver Broncos against the defense of the Arizona Cardinals today's excitement is brought to you by Nissan Peyton Manning three touchdown passes at 502 for his career all-time record holder Brett Favre at 508 so he's gaining on him Favre with over 71,000 passing yards Peyton Manning closing in on 66,000 And with that kickoff out of the back of the end zone, we send it down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, thanks. Let's talk a little offense for both of these clubs. Since Denver's taking the field first, uh, talking to John Fox coming out, he said, yes, it's nice to have Demarius Thomas back. We weren't really too worried about it. I said, are you worried about the running game? The crowd seems to be. And he said, well, I don't know. We're going to still try here in the second half and see what we can do. As for the Cardinals, Bruce Arian says, Someone needs to catch the ball and help Drew Stanton out. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's had some drops. He's thrown some good passes. He's did in that first half and showed how tough he is hanging in. Number 20. On first down, Manning is tripped up. That'll be the first sack of the day, and it's Frosty Rucker who got his hand on, I believe, the right foot or leg of Peyton Manning. No, it's an excellent job by Frosty Rucker being able to get that inside pressure that that we've talked about here. He's in the middle of the screen and he gets up the field and then gets just enough of Peyton Manning. But to go back to Aaron Andrews's report, I mean, the Broncos, what they have four yards rushing there in the first half, but a big half by Peyton Manning. And you just get the idea that this defense for Arizona is going to have to come up with some more turnovers in order to have a chance in this game. 
Timeout called by Peyton Manning, and he's frustrated, and he grabs Monte Ball in a good way. Friendly grab. And so a timeout, obviously, the first of the half taken by Manning, taken by the Broncos. It, it did catch your attention. We referenced it earlier with Peyton Manning, the way he basically runs a practice like he did on Friday. And as you said, if you don't run the right route during practice, <laughs> he's not afraid to let you know you didn't run the right route. Well, Peyton was in a foul mood on Friday. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know exactly what the reasoning was behind it, but he is very demanding, you know, of the players. He expects perfection in a lot of ways. And, it's not surprising then when you see it's one thing for him to have the success he had at Indianapolis but to come here to a new team and a new way of doing things and to impose his style and have the results that he's had it, it really is a testament to the way he prepares and the way he makes these others prepare around him. And he holds them accountable. That's why a guy like Julius Thomas or young Demarius Thomas is in such good hands. Here's Welker, and why a guy like Brock Osweiler, who's hardly snipped the field, a second-round pick in 2012 out of Arizona State, whenever the day comes, Osweiler has had the best tutor he could possibly have in Peyton Manning. Well, a lot of times when you've backed up a Peyton Manning or a Tom Brady, then when you get your chance to be the guy, you think that's how you're supposed to act, but you, you got to have some successes before oh, yeah. you can start doing some of the things that Peyton does in a practice. Manning glared out. Flag is thrown. Here's Thomas again. But a flag is down. Thomas into the end zone. Touchdown. There are flags all over the field. There are three of them down there. You see Peyton Manning, he's celebrating touchdown. A lot of contact. Cromarty on Demarius Thomas. Cromarty still wanted to make up for giving up the touchdown before the end of the first half. Physical were, off the line of there scrimmage. Were fouls against both teams. Personal foul, chop block by the offense, number 78. Holding number 31 of the defense. Those penalties offset. Replay for down. So forget a 77 yarder to Demarius Thomas, which would be his third long touchdown of the game. Here's the chop block against the three time Pro Bowler, Ryan Clady. And Thomas was involved. And Julius Thomas was the one who went low. And that's really the guy who they call on that. And a, a big play coming back. So instead of a 77 yarder, they go with an 86 yarder, which is the longest play from scrimmage this season in the NFL. And a 31 yarder, all for Demarius Thomas. It's third and seven again. And because of that long run, Demarius Thomas is on the sideline. It's a big weapon not to have out there. Here's one for Caldwell. Nice play defensively for Arizona. There's no flag as Antonio Cromarty got his right hand in there. It's pretty good stuff right there. Peyton Manning comes right back on Antonio Cromarty. Cromarty, who's given up a couple big plays, even though the last one got called back, he's still locked up. Man-to-man -man coverage, press off the line of scrimmage, and makes a nice play at the end of that, that play there to force a punt. You, know, you say you got to have a short memory as a corner, and Cromartie gets right back into his position and does what he does. Beautiful punt hit by Colquitt. That was good work by Cromartie. And Ginn hops out of bounds at the 24. After a 59-yard punt, they've been going after Cromartie. Antonio won that last battle. Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. By Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By KFC, the world's best chicken. How do you KFC? And by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Wow. How good is that? A GoPro. A skydiver before the game. Blitz coming from Denver. Cardinals pick it up and nearly picked off by Brandon Marshall as he flashed in front of Larry Fitzgerald. A good play by Brandon Marshall. 
as he lays out to break up this pass. One of the things that he does well, he moves exceptionally well. He got his opportunity to, to play quite a bit when Trevathan was down. But he did a pretty nice job. They're glad to have Trevathan back. But a good play there by Brandon Marshall. Guy who was on the practice squad. And he's been elevated now. Started as Troy said the first three games for the injured Trevathan. He's going to get a lot of work. Second down, John Brown. Just smoked. He was hit and hit hard by Trevathan, who's back first week back, a gain of three. Well, this defense is really starting to find themselves, Joe. Jack Del Rio doing a nice job last or two weeks ago when they played Seattle. It was really this defense that got that game turned back around to give Denver a chance. Now, they didn't make a stop in overtime, and they ended up losing that game. But they give up a couple drives in this game, settle for two field goals. Other than that, Cardinals really haven't done much on offense. Yeah, guy who's been a nine-year head coach in the NFL, as you saw in Jacksonville. Third down and seven. Stanton gets hit. Pass incomplete. And Stanton is slow to get up. They need him to get up. Backing him up is a fourth-round rookie, Logan Thomas, as Vaughn Miller came in again. Yeah, Vaughn Miller off the edge. I mean, we've seen this now a couple times. Earlier in the first half, the same situation against Massey. Vaughn Miller off the edge and gets right into Stanton's face. Zastadil. One of his better ones of the day. A little hang to it and a fair catch by Burse. Take a break, come back, Big man in second possession. Second half, Broncos up eight. Really nice moment at halftime as they celebrated and recognized nearly 100 breast cancer survivors. Annual screening saves lives. Help finish the fight against breast cancer by visiting NFL.com slash pink to celebrate the NFL and American Cancer Society's first ever a crucial catch day on October 25th. From the 30, can the ground game get going? Good second effort by Ball. They're looking at Drew Stanton over on the sideline after that big hit from Vaughn Miller. Well, Vaughn Miller, get, you see the right arm as he's throwing the ball. He comes in with the helmet, you know, right underneath there. And, you know, you get exposed then as a quarterback. And now you see the young rookie warming up. He may get his opportunity. Fourth round pick. Out of Virginia Tech. Here's a wide open receiver, and that's, there he is again, Emmanuel Sanders. And able to hang on after a big hit. And now back behind the play, a player is down, but this guy's all over the field. This was a big hit at the end of this play, oh. too, and they warrant that he was a runner and not a defenseless receiver, and that's why there's no flag, but it's close. You got to get two feet down, but it was a big time hit. Emmanuel Sanders hangs on to the ball. Monte Ball is down. They're looking at the top running back for the Broncos. We'll take a break. This game is sponsored by Verizon. More live games than ever before with NFL Mobile. We just had a couple of things happen here. Monte Ball needed some help to get off the field, and Drew Stanton, the quarterback for the Cardinals, just left. We don't want to get a closer look at the body of Stanton. Maybe in an x-ray machine is Manning. They're going to throw a flag. Emmanuel Sanders was bothered and possibly held or interfered with by Peterson. Prior to the pass, holding, number 21 defense. Five-yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. That's a, that's a pretty good matchup right there between those two guys, Patrick Peterson. You know, one of the best corners in, in all of football signed a big contract, and he is outstanding. And talking with Todd Bowles, he says, hey, the guy can get even better. But he's matched up with Emmanuel Sanders in the slot. And just as Sanders tries to come out of that break, he was held. Ronnie Hillman now in the backfield with ball injured, and Hillman breaks loose. Biggest run of the day for the Broncos. The first down inside the 30, a gain of 12. And we take you down to Aaron Andrews. Well, we all saw the hit that Drew Stanton took on the field. I watched him over here on the sidelines. Trainers were looking at his left shoulder, but we were just told by the Arizona Cardinals that he was taken back into the locker room. They're evaluating him for a concussion, Joe. All right, well, that's big news and bad news for Arizona. Jury's out on Palmer when he's coming back. 
Now they may have lost his understudy, Drew Stanton. With that, after a carry by Hillman for three yards, we'll go to Kurt with a game break. All right, Alex Smith back in his old stomping grounds in San Francisco throws his second touchdown pass of the game. To the rookie, the Anthony, the Anthony Thomas out of Oregon, 17 yards, and they lead it 17-13. Joe Troy and Aaron. Well, the 49ers just aren't what they have been the last few years. No, they just, uh, it, so much happened with that team going back to the offseason and no contract for Jim Harbaugh and what's going to happen with him to holdouts to suspensions, and it's carried over into the season. Second and seven now, Manning for Thomas. Couldn't get to that spot. Third and seven coming up. Well, you look at this game right now, Joe, and, and defensively for Arizona, I mean, they've gotten the takeaways. They set up the touchdown for Arizona offensively. They give the ball to Arizona to their offense with great field position. They don't do anything with it there. But it's hard to continually hang in there against this offensive group if you're not getting more help from, from your own offense. Blitz. Manning nearly picked by Cromarty. Manning has been sacked one time in this game, Troy, and that was when he had his foot hit and he was tripped up. But since Peyton Manning's come to the Broncos, the one thing they've really done is protect him well. They've allowed only 45 sacks of this guy, by far the fewest in the NFL since 2012. He doesn't get sacked a lot. Overall, the line does a pretty good job. But I really credit Peyton more than the offensive line for the few sacks that he has had. Think back to that Super Bowl game, Joe. He got roughed up pretty good, yet he was only sacked one time in that game. He gets the ball out quick, even when there are free rushers in his face. First real long try for McManus. It's his job now taking over for Prater, who was released, and he's good from 44. That had to feel good, not just for McManus, but for the Broncos' front office, up 11. New this season, stream live local Sunday afternoon games right on your smartphone with NFL Mobile. Tickin Jr. waiting for the kick from McManus. Out of the back of the end zone. During the week, the Broncos cut Matt Prater. His suspension was supposed to end after this game. He was the longest tenured Bronco. McManus just hit from 44. Now the story shifts to the other sideline and the man coming off it, Logan Thomas, the rookie fourth round pick out of Virginia Tech. He's big, athletic, strong arm. Arians likes him, but he needs to be refined. He's got a lot of work to do, and here he is. <laughs> He better like him. He drafted him. You know, and I asked him, is he ready to play, and how much work does he get in practice? He doesn't get any work with these ones. This will be probably the first time he's ever thrown the ball to these receivers. And off is to Ellington. So how will Bruce Arians play it? I, here you are down by 11. You're in the game, but you're facing a team that's got Manning on the other sideline. You can try and run the ball all you want, but at some point, Logan Thomas is going to have to throw it. Yeah, you know, knowing Bruce Arians, you know, the best chance they have is, is take the shots. You know, and Jack Del Rio, the defensive coordinator for Denver, he knows that. But he would have more success taking shots than he will be trying to read defenses and fit balls into tight spaces. He keeps it, and down he goes. Second play from scrimmage to Marcus Ware. He adds a new name to his list, and it's third down. Well, this is the young guy, Logan Thomas. Here you got DeMarcus Ware coming off the edge, but Logan Thomas has got to step up. You got to help your tackles out. He had a nice, clean pocket inside, and that's just the inexperience of a young quarterback in this league. When you, well, he may not even know who DeMarcus Ware is, but he does now. You know, a guy with that kind of speed and that ability, that's hard. That's hard on the tackle. Valdir. Ware now with over 120 sacks in the NFL. Thomas gets away from Ware, but can't get away from the rest of the defense. They're going to blow it dead as Thomas got to the 10. 
We came in talking or at least expecting a lot from number 15. He led the league Michael Floyd in yards per catch. He's been shut down today. Yeah they they've really shut everybody down and you know so much of this Cardinals offense is about completing some of these big plays down the field. We talked about earlier it's what they like to do right now Denver's going to challenge the call. But if Bill Levy blew the play dead because the forward progress was stopped you can't review it. And Bill Levy just told that to John Fox. He's saying Levy saying the plays dead or grasp and control even if the ball came out at the end of it you can't challenge it. So no challenge and we'll have a punt. And for Arizona it's the sixth three and out today fourth straight. But the ball coming out. It doesn't matter if it was grasp and control or if progress was stopped and the play whistled dead. Zastadil's got to come up with a big punt here. With Burst, the rookie, waiting for it. And he hits a decent punt, but a little bit of room. Flag is down. Burst going backward. Well covered downfield, and that's the long snapper, the guy who made the tackle for Arizona, Mike Leach. But a flag down early. And they may make him re punt it. Looks to be against Arizona. Illegal formation on the kicking team. The five yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run. First down, Denver. Timeout. So they're going to tack it on. Good field position for Peyton Manning and the Broncos offense as they lead Arizona by 11. Will this be history? Yes! Number 500! Congratulations to number 18. We saw number 500 early. He's got his 86th career 300 yard passing day. He hands to Hillman running left. And you just wonder how long this Arizona defense can bend and not break as Hillman carries it for 16 yards. Well, it's a good job by Ronnie Hillman recognizing the blocking scheme and then getting inside the tackle. Ryan Clady there on the outside and he opens up a lane and Hillman now with a couple big runs with the opportunities that he's been given. He didn't have many chances through the first three games. Injury to Monte Ball in this second half. Hillman gets a yard. Let's go down for more injury information. Here's Aaron. You, men you mentioned this Arizona defense. Tough blow for them. Defensive end Kalalis Campbell. He's questionable with a right knee injury. Of course, we saw him on the bad end of that chop block. And you mentioned Monty Ball. Groin injury. Questionable as well, Joe. And we also saw the rookie tight end from Notre Dame, Troy Nicholas. It carted off for Arizona. So, been a painful second half. Second and nine. Blitz. Broncos pick it up. Thomas downfield working on Cromarty. And those two have seen each other since this thing kicked off. Well, Todd Bowles knows that he's got an offense that isn't doing much to help out this group. So they've got to sell out defensively. And they're bringing pressure. It's man to man across the board. No safety help whatsoever. And just trying to keep the Broncos from getting any closer to the end zone and not giving up any more points. The rookie Juwan Thompson in the backfield, third down, pass is incomplete. Peterson was covering Emmanuel Sanders, fourth down. And so maybe a little bit more on McManus. In cutting Matt Prater, they cut a guy who had the best field goal percentage in NFL history at 50 or more yard field goals, 21 of 27. Last year hit a 64 yarder for an NFL record. He's been playoff tested. But A, there was a lot of money involved. And B, he was coming off a suspension for the substance abuse that gone with the kid, and he just hooked it. His first miss in the NFL, he's now four for five. Well, that 40 yarder, Joe, that he made had to have given John Elway and John Fox and everybody else in this organization a sigh of relief 
because of the decision that you said to release Matt Prater. But you know now this and it's one thing to kick here at Mile High in October. You know it's another thing when you're doing it in December and certainly in the playoffs which is where this team's going to be. There's John Elway. Two time Super Bowl champion here has done a brilliant job going to the front office rebuilding this team each and every year landing Peyton Manning and now really attacking his own defense after that debacle in the Super Bowl. So here we go second possession quick short throw and now a drop from Ellington as Logan Thomas has it for the second time seven drops by the Arizona receivers in this game. Well and, and uh, we just saw one on that last play and, and this right now when you've got a when you've got a young quarterback in there you, you really got to rally around him and, and each guy's got to you know you can't drop the easy ones then you got to make the tough plays. So now second and ten. After the 53 yard field goal miss it's Ellington. He gets a yard and a half. One other note about the nerve specialist Carson Palmer has been seeing. Same guy who helped Peyton Manning overcome all those issues in his neck and with a nerve that would help fire on that right arm. Carson's trying to work his way back. Same neurologist that's been working with the great Amy Van Dyken, who was a tremendous United States Olympic swimmer. Wonderful, wonderful girl. Married to the longtime punter here, Tom Rowan. Had a tragic accident. Her recovery has been remarkable. Loved in the Denver area. Thinking of her today. Now third name. Blitz. Pass incomplete. Logan Thomas ends up on the ground and Fitzgerald was the closest to it. But he and Thomas were not on the same page. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. They brought pressure, and so Thomas has to get the ball out of his hands. T.J. Ward on the blitz, but Larry Fitzgerald was running. I, he's not even looking for the ball. You know, was not expecting it to be in his vicinity. Arizona started three for four on third down in this game against Denver. Now they've gone 0 for their last nine. Let's take a look back. Under five to go, third quarter. Denver up by 11 with a ball. How do we get here? Peyton Manning, his first of the day, 500th of his Hall of Fame career to Julius Thomas, second guy to get to 500 in NFL history. But it was Demarius Thomas with two long ones in the first half. 31 yards and then 86 yards. The Denver defense knocked out Drew Stanton. So any hopes of a comeback well, they dim a little bit with the rookie Logan Thomas taking yeah, over. You know, I mentioned it early in this half that this defense, they, they got to make something happen. You know, they got to help out the offense and give them another short field to climb back in it. Quick throw, and that's batted down. As a big defensive lineman got up, that was Kareem Martin, the rookie. But it kind of shows you coming into this game, Joe, we talked about it. Uh, Peyton really expected Julius Thomas to have a big game here today. They were going to spread him out and do some different things because he's, you know, such a matchup problems for a defense. But, you know, he's been relatively quiet, just two receptions. And instead, it's been the other Thomas with the big Arrow, afternoon, as you said. Handoff is to Hillman. Good pursuit as Foot makes the tackle, but the first guy there. It was Kareem Martin who just batted that pass down on first down just a gain of one. Well we saw Calais Campbell walking off the field. We've already talked about the, the variety of injuries and suspensions and how shorthanded this defense has been and and what a great job Todd Bowles has done. You know allowing them to come out and still play well. You lose another guy like Calais Campbell. That's hard. Hard to overcome and he's a playmaker and and we saw that with the interception that he had. Showing blitz. Here they come. Third down and nine. Pass caught but short of a first down. Julius Thomas and right on his back was Tony Jefferson. Good work by this Cardinals defense. Really good. Really good job by them in you know what was pretty good field position for Denver once again and and forcing a three and out. 
and hoping that maybe their offense can get something going. Well, they would like it to start with a big return from Ted Ginn Jr. Who has a 71 yard punt return for a touchdown already this season. He waits inside his own 20. Good punt. Fair catch. And Ginn got his hands on it. Denver jumping on a loose ball. Did they get it? Indecision by Ginn. Called for a fair catch, was going to stay away. Then he got tempted. He touched it. Denver says they have it. Obviously something that you don't believe the Cardinals can overcome if they don't have the ball. Well, they're saying and that the Cardinals, it's Cardinals ball and that it looked like Troy Denver got on top and then at the bottom of that pile somebody must have ripped it out of there. Well Kayvon Webster is the one who came in initially and Ted Ginn then was going to field it. He fair caught it was going to and then when Kayvon Webster got in there he, he got spooked tried getting out of the way and the ball comes into him. Yeah, you're you're right. It's Webster in there, and then Earl Watford, the big lineman, and I think it was just a tug of war, and Watford won number 78 over Kayvon Webster. Well, that's usually what happens. It's not always who first gets the ball, <laughs> it's who, who has wow. it last at the bottom of those piles. So from the 19, here's Logan Thomas again. He throws and somehow. No flags. And the Cardinals are right back in it. How did Thomas fit that ball in there? And what a catch by Andre Ellington. 81 yards for the touchdown. Well, Raheem Moore is asking himself the same question, Joe. You see, Ellington, he runs the wheel route from the backfield. There's two receivers essentially in the same position. It, it, that's not supposed to happen either and Nate Irving is right there in a ball that's you know he put it right where it had to be I mean that's literally threading a needle there are two defensive players there for Denver Thomas ends up on the ground and Ellington in 13 seconds takes it in and with that it's a four point game how about that Mike Michael Floyd Looked like he was supposed to have more separation than he had from Andre Ellington. But Floyd, as he's going up the numbers, he gets pushed to the outside. That brings over wow. his defender. And then Nate Irving's in coverage on Ellington. And it's, you know, sometimes, you know, you throw it as a young guy and you hope for the best. And, and this was one of those that worked out. You know, I mean, they obviously liked the matchup that they had with Ellington on the linebacker. But because of Floyd being pushed out wide, it brought that defender over to make a play, and he fails to make the tackle, too. Well, the kids got one, Logan Thomas, 81 yards. And remember, it was Earl Watford who provided the opportunity by getting the ball at the bottom of that pileup that went off the hands of Ted Ginn. Well, now we got a ball game. Arizona 3-0 for the third time in franchise history since the merger in 1970. They started 4-0 in 2012. The guys around the team now that were there then say it's got a much different feel. We're better than we were, meaning they were in 2012. That remains to be seen. All these injuries, including maybe to their top two quarterbacks, but they are on the road in Denver in a four-point game. Well, it's hard to win when you have your backup in the game you know, when you're going with your third guy and he's a rookie quarterback playing on the road at Denver, that's tough duty. Manning will have it up four at the 20 with a ton of time left. Well, what's happened? We've seen multiple injuries, none bigger for Arizona at the moment than the one with Drew Stanton on the hit by Vaughn Miller. And the kid took over Troy and just threw a pass where I would say a veteran might not even throw the ball because there's too good a coverage. <laughs> well, sometimes it's good to be young. 
How about that block by Floyd to help spring Andre Ellington? Well, it kind of shows you the versatility of Andre Ellington for those that haven't seen him play. And it was a nice catch. Here's Juwan Thompson. His first day carrying the ball, C.J. Anderson, another back was deactivated before the game, so they're left with Ronnie Hillman and Juwan Thompson. Kevin Minter on the tackle for the Cardinals. Ground game's been a little better in the second half for Denver. Omaha! Manning slides, has Thomas. Thomas to midfield. The big tight end, the four-year pro. And last year, a pro bowler good for 25. Yeah, the Cardinals, they put eight guys in to play the run. One on one outside, and then you're working the middle of the field with the linebackers. Julius Thomas gets lost in there. Peyton Manning finds him. It's a nice pickup. On first down, handoff is to Thompson. Stacked up after a gain of two. Paul Cornick. He's going to check in as an eligible receiver as they try to get bigger on the offensive line and eat up some of the clock and get something going on the ground. There's Cornick, first year player out of North Dakota State. Second and eight. Vegas! Vegas! 50 as well! Vegas! Vegas! Vegas. Got it. Omaha! Check. Manning's got a man, Tammy, and the tight end out of bounds at the 32. Sixteen yards to Jacob Tammy. Yeah, I like Jacob Tammy. He's a guy who you don't hear a lot about because of all the other good players around him. But I, you know, think back to his time there at Indianapolis, and he had some nice catches for Peyton back then. They pick him up here in Denver a couple of years ago, and. He runs a good route on that last play, and there's so many guys you're worried about and trying to cover that a guy like him comes in, you just forget about him. 20. Here's Sanders. Pretty well played out on the edge. Tony Jefferson, the safety, came up and at least slowed down Sanders. A gain of five, and it looked like there was a lot of room out there to run. Well, they've tried that play now. A few times. Help keep a defense honest, get the ball into his hands. Denver could let the third quarter expire. That's going to be interesting. There was movement, but I don't think foot came across. Chris Clark, Clark said he did. Number 75 offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. You can force the movement on the offensive line. And that's what Foote just did. And that should be it for the third quarter. And it is. Good work by Larry Foote. That makes the second down longer. It's like about second down and 11 or 12. When we start the fourth, back after this, from your local Fox station. Four-point game, second down, as we start the fourth quarter. Well, second and ten, but a long ten. Yeah, Demarius Thomas, once again, locked up with Antonio Cromartie at the top of the screen. On second down and long, running to his left is Hillman. It's a big hit as he heads out of bounds from Larry Foote. Third down coming up. Well, obviously, we're just starting the fourth quarter here in a four-point game, and you know Arizona just trying to trying to hold Denver to a field goal opportunity on this drive. And overall, I, I think this defense has held up pretty well. I'm with you. They've been tested. They're short-handed. They're now playing without Calais Campbell.
Third down and six. Cardinals back out of that blitz. Catch is made, but short of a first down is Welker. And their defending was one of the guys who was up there showing blitz. They own Buchanan. Well, Peyton upset that John Fox is not electing to go for it. And, you know, that's one of those where, you know, Wes Welker, you got to push up. You got to you got to give yourself a chance to where if you complete the pass, it's a first down. Now, that ball was low and away, and he had to go down to get it. But you want to get enough depth on the route, so you pick up the first down. 41-yard drive by Brandon McManus. One for two on the day. Coming off his first miss. And that is through. He hits the left upright. And it caroms through. That's usually a bad sound for a kicker. But for McManus, caught a break. Seven-point game in Denver. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the new Volkswagen Jetta. Isn't it time for German engineering? By Microsoft Surface, the official tablet of the NFL. And by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. They won't need the fake stuff pretty soon. Although the weather just ideal. 72 degrees are in that vicinity at the start of the day. Seven point game. McManus hit from 41. Hit the upright. And the field goal. Tomorrow on Fox, we've got two shows everyone's talking about. First, heroes and villains collide in an all-new Gotham. If you haven't seen it, you need to. And it's TV's wildest ride on a new Sleepy Hollow. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on Fox. Well, here's Logan Thomas, fresh off an 81-yard touchdown to Andre Ellington. Previous nine drives for the Cardinals generated 33 yards. Here's Ellington. Going to get five, maybe five and a half. Yeah, they haven't had a whole lot of success running the football with, with Andre Ellington, and it would sure help out this young quarterback if they were able to, to get it going a little bit. But I talked about it a little bit earlier that this Broncos defense, generally real good against the run, and, and one of the reasons is because of how big they are there in the middle with those two defensive tackles. Darren Knighton's got his own car commercial on second and five. Call him the pot roast around here, which is an interesting nickname. Number 98. Not Maybe just a tire commercial, that's yeah, what it is. Yeah, tire commercial. Not just pot roast, but the pot roast. The pot roast. And, and you know, when he came here from Jacksonville, he didn't want to be called pot roast. He was hoping to drop the nickname, nah, but that's it, gonna follow it, well, he's become quite a celebrity here in the Denver area, as you said. Now he's doing commercials. I was out there at practice on Friday. He's dancing and now he's on the sideline. He'll be on Dancing with the Stars with Aaron next year. Third down and three. Four-man rush. Pass is dropped. Another drop. That was Ginn, and he looked like he had enough for a first down. And these receivers haven't helped Stanton or now Logan Thomas at all. No, the ball's coming at him a little differently. They haven't caught passes from him, but you got to make that play. Ted Ginn's in a position to make the catch. It's a good throw. And they pick up the first down and keep this drive going if he does. Eight drops by Arizona today. 10 straight failed efforts on third down. Good point. Denver Broncos offense back on the field. 12 20 to go. Again, missed one there. So Peyton Manning, the offense back to work up seven. Taking over at the 20, up by seven. Yard pickup by Ronnie Hillman. Start looking at the numbers. And there are numbers within the numbers. The career games. Favre ended up with 508 touchdown passes. Obviously, Peyton Manning got there faster, much faster than Favre. The wins, Favre leads in that category. Red Favre also with more interceptions in his career. Got the most ever. That's 
Hillman, not much. Far through 336 picks. Peyton Manning has 222, including two today. And he's faced with third and four. Yeah, Favre had, the numbers that Favre had when he retired, Joe, I, I didn't think that they would be reachable. You know, I mean, some pretty significant numbers. Manning's going to break the touchdowns, he's, if, and he's going to keep playing. There's no, there's no way of thinking that he's done. You know, after this year, he'll have all the records by the time he's through. Third down and four. Manning steps up. He's got Thomas. He's got a big day. Getting bigger. Out of bounds near the 40. They're going to mark him at the 45. That's where he stepped out. A catch and run of 29. Well, you get this man-to-man -man look over and over and over by Arizona. So you run the crossing routes, and then Cromartie's expected to navigate traffic and run stride for stride with Darius Thomas and Demarius Thomas and that's it's hard to do you're right he's having himself a, a heck of a game here but these corners they're on an island the entire game it's hard to hold on play after play here's Hillman nice run by Ronnie Hillman who had only two carries coming into this game for two yards that was good for 13 yeah, Ronnie Hillman is a guy that they really like think back to last year as we see the day that Demarius Thomas has had, you know, they were platooning him and Monte Ball and working in the different guys that they had, no Sean Marino, and, and then Ronnie Hillman had a, a, the month of October, he had back-to-back -back fumbles, and shoot, he didn't get the ball again until December. You know, so the key for him is hanging on to the football, but he's given this running game a little life here in the second half. He has, so ball on the sideline. Patrick Peterson now is slow to get up. And there's another guy that's banged up on this defense for Arizona. The thing about it is with Peyton Manning with the Denver Broncos, there's such a small margin for error when you play them. And that's not just defensively. The pressure's on your offense to try to keep him off the field. Yeah, I mean, they've given up a lot of yards, Arizona has, but they, they've done a good job getting off the field on third down. And considering that they haven't gotten much help from their, from their offense, you know, I think they've... They've held up about as well as could be expected. Now you see a guy like Patrick Peterson going off the field. That's that's awfully difficult to hang in there when you're losing your key players the way that they have in this game as well as going back to previous weeks. Omaha! Here's Welker. Not much. Good play by Powers. Go back to see whatever happened with Patrick Peterson. They're working on the foot and that's why I got tangled up with Rashad Johnson well now you start losing a guy like him or someone like Antonio Cromartie it really does affect what you're doing defensively because you know as we talked about they're able to play man coverage and allow you to give help in other areas you lose one of those top corners now you're having to start giving help in coverage that changes the dynamic completely defensively Second down and nine. There's Welker. First down. Wes Welker out of bounds inside the 12. Wes Welker now, Troy, has the most catches in the history of this league for an undrafted college receiver and of all people whose record he breaks. Rod Smith who was so good here with John Elway with the Denver Broncos, but his career has just been remarkable. I remember when he was in Miami, Jason Garrett was quarterback's coach there on that team, and when they let him go to New England and they didn't sign him with the Dolphins, he said, we just made a huge mistake. And that was before most people even knew who Wes Welker was. Here's Hillman. Wow, what a hit by the safety, Tony Jefferson. Rod Smith played 13 years with Denver, had 849 receptions out of Missouri Southern. And now you've got Wes Welker, who played at Texas Tech. He said yesterday in the newspaper, I wouldn't have drafted me. I mean, come on. I'm 5'9", 185, but there's a big heart beating inside that chest. He is tough. Well, that's an understatement. He is a great, great competitor and as tough as they come. Omaha! 
Second and ten. Manning, is it another? Tony Jefferson is 5'11", Julius Thomas 6'5", and he's got a background in basketball, and he didn't even have to go up for that one. He's just able to get a release, get in behind him, and Peyton Manning throws it to the pylon. And now the extra point barely sneaks in, but it's a 14-point game. Peyton Manning's got four today. 503 in his career. Frustration for that defense. It's played tough all day for Arizona. This game is sponsored by the new Samsung Galaxy Note 4. The next big thing is here. Pete Manning has a 424-yard day and lost another 125 on a replay review and a penalty. We talked about the first touchdown back in 1998 on the fade to Marvin Harrison. Week 1, 1998, what else happened? Ryan Leaf throws a touchdown in his NFL debut. Randy Moss, Fox Sports' own Randy Moss. Two touchdowns in his NFL debut in that year. <laughs> a spry young quarterback, at least younger. Things were just falling apart with the hey. Dallas Cowboys. You threw two. That's right. It was a career-high two touchdowns. Thank you very much. <laughs> In a win over the Cardinals. Soon thereafter, he would be an announcer and need a press pass to get into a stadium. Running for his life is Logan Thomas, who launches it out of bounds. I think the country has seen enough of us for the day, but we'll <laughs> pop back yeah. on. This is what he looks like now in a suit after all those years wearing number eight. Uh, as, a, as a fellow quarterback and as a Hall of Famer, when you get a chance to do a Peyton Manning game, I know it's a treat yeah. the whole weekend, but, but what does what his brilliance mean to you? Well, Joe, I was just sitting here when you said 424 yards. He's, he's so good, we, we take it for granted too often. Here's Ellington. He's got nowhere to go as the defense is just going to swarm Arizona now. I mean, as, as someone who knows how hard the position is to play, and then watching him and what he does during the week and how he prepares himself and his team to come out here and play at this level, it, 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 people have no idea. I mean, they see what happens on Sunday, and he's been doing it a long time. When you start talking about 500 touchdowns, or a guy like Emmett Smith, who I played for, who has the all-time rushing record, to do that, not only do you have to play at a high level for a long time, but you have to be on the field. You know what I mean? So, you know, he missed the one season, but he's been remarkably healthy. It's phenomenal what he's done. Five-time MVP, we're going to have a hold. It'll be declined, and it'll be fourth down. Holding number 68 offense, penalties declined, fourth down. You know, you think back now, Joe, it's, it's easy. And you say, oh, yeah, well, why wouldn't you go out and sign Peyton Manning? I mean, give John Elway some credit. Absolutely. You know, I mean, no one knew if he was ever going to be able to play again. And, you know, I think that's a guy... John Elway, who has been overlooked in some of the successes that have taken place here in Denver as well, bringing Peyton Manning in, and then the way he's been able to work this roster, he's done a terrific job. It was a recruitment to get Peyton Manning to come here, and as you said, there were no sure bets. Here's the rookie burst. Four operations on his neck. Missed the year. He's come back. Might be in some ways better than ever. Boy, they got some stars here in Denver. And they all circle around him. Put Aikman to work. Start talking about some other teams around the NFL. Is, <laughs> Come on, don't overload me. <laughs> watch the last 640. And watch Peyton Manning. Challenge Favre may be here today. Already got four touchdowns. 5 away from the all-time record set by Brett Favre. They're going to put it up. Why not? Wide open is Thomas. He's over 200 yards as he adds to his career best day. He's been itching for a day like this. Yeah, it's a good coming out for this season for Demarius Thomas. This is an outstanding route on the outside. It's been a quite a battle going on on the outside between he and Cromarty. 
Antonio Cromartie, as I said, he's one of the better players in this league. Really a fine corner, but he's had his hands full this afternoon. 213 receiving yards for number 88. And two touchdowns. Manning pulls it down, floats it for Hillman. Out of bounds. Well, they have tried to find number 31 all day long, and he's been staring into the chest, and then after that, the back of Demarius Thomas. I think a little bit of it too though Joe is you know the guy opposite of him Patrick Peterson is is something special too and having played with Deion Sanders if he's on the field that other corner is going to get a lot of work and that's what's happened in this game they've kind of stayed away from Patrick Peterson instead they've been trying to exploit this matchup with success with Demarius Thomas and Antonio Cromartie. Peterson is still out we saw him and he worked on his foot last time Denver had a high snap to Hillman. Peterson in the dressing room for the Cardinals. The defense is just dragging now for the Arizona Cardinals. They're losing guys. They're losing air. They've been out there for a long time and good job by Peyton Manning to get up and one hand that high snap. And we see Buchanan. He's leaving the field. He looks like he's jumped a little bit as well. Marius Thomas could set a Broncos franchise record. This one is caught by Julius Thomas, the tight end. Troy Demarius Thomas, 213 receiving yards today, one away from the record set by Shannon Sharp back in 2002, the Hall of Famer at Kansas City. Yeah, and like you said a moment ago, that you know the one that was called back. First and goal. Thompson. That's his first. A college free agent from Duke. Carries it in from eight yards out. Well, Ryan Clady, he does a good job of getting his guy off the ball. They're not able to get the tackle. There when they get their hands on him with Martin. Just a good drive. This defense just gassed. 41-20. Another team that's picked it up is piloted by Peyton's little brother, two-time Super Bowl champ. Eli Manning they look like they were completely lost and now they've got three straight wins and they welcome in their top pick Odell Beckham Jr. his first game battling with a bad hamstring at four catches and a touchdown today. Yeah good to have him back I know they've been waiting on him and you're right the first two weeks Joe I, the Giants look terrible I mean I don't know what I was watching especially on offense a new offense for Eli Manning but the last three weeks that win at Washington I thought was huge. You know, against a team that had been playing pretty good, primetime game, and yet they're able to come out of there with a victory. And then against an Atlanta team that's that showed some pretty good signs here in the early going. So those are three good wins for the Giants team to get themselves right back in the middle of this division race, which is a lot more competitive right now with the Cowboys at four and one and the Eagles at four and one than what we thought coming into this year. Yeah, that Ben McAdoo offense. They are hitting their stride. That's good news for Eli Manning, Tom Coughlin, the Giants. That looked like that was going to end ugly. And now here they are. Staring up, but only one game behind Philly and Dallas. Can't wait for it tomorrow night on Fox Sports 1. And a matchup of the Dodgers and the Cardinals. Two one-run games. John Lackey for St. Louis. Ryu for the Dodgers at 9 Eastern tomorrow night. Fox Sports 1 streaming live on Fox Sports Go and Lackey's been a big game pitcher. It's why they got him at the deadline from Boston and Ryu 
Been bothered by shoulder inflammation, but he's back. And you're leaving me with Brenneman for the next three weeks. Tommy Brennan will be doing his thing. You guys are going to go over to London. Here's a pass behind Floyd. Can you highlight enough what Tom Moore meant early and probably still to this day in the career of then a young Peyton Manning in Indy? Peyton said it was a proud moment in his life when Tom Moore started the text because you always had to leave a voicemail for him and then he, eventually he'd get back to him and you know now he's able to text with Peyton and Peyton was telling some great Tom Moore stories tremendous admiration for him and what he meant to his career there in Indianapolis and it was it was fun listening to Peyton reminisce he's now the assistant head coach for the Arizona Cardinals as Ellington loses yardage T.J. Ward who was one of the additions to this defense for Denver up to make the stop a loss of one so you had not only him but the quarterbacks coach for Peyton Manning was now the Arizona head coach Bruce Arians. Well Peyton said when he left Indianapolis he threw a retirement party for Tom Moore you know he thought he was done coaching and then the next thing he knows he's he's coming to Arizona and he's on the on the staff and Peyton said hey I'm taking everything back I'm taking all my toes back all my money back. <laughs> You'll have to throw another one for him here in a few years. They're down in 11. Good arm strength, but out of bounds is the second foot. The left one did not come down. Michael Floyd, good effort. You can see the zip that this young quarterback, Logan Thomas, can put on a football. I want to talk about Tom Moore some more. Go ahead. You know, the, the, the other guy he threw a retirement party for was Howard Mudd. Remember the offensive yeah. line coach? He had been there forever as well. And Peyton throwing all these retirement parties for everybody, and, and none of them retired. That's great. Peyton can afford it. It's a 10th three and out by Arizona as Burse crosses midfield. Week five, Sunday Night Football tonight, 8.30 Eastern on NBC. There's the matchup. The undefeated Bengals against the Patriots. And then tomorrow night, football on ESPN. This will just get you ready for baseball on Fox Sports 1, the Seahawks and the Redskins. How about this day for the defense that came in ranked fifth overall there are a lot of defenses that have come here to Denver and left worn out and not embarrassed that's not the word but just shredded and that's what Peyton Manning and this offense has done to Bruce Arians group and they are undermanned and they are tired yeah it even goes back before then you know you think back to the late 90s with with John Elway and Mike Shanahan when he took over as head coach and how explosive those teams were offensively these these fans have I don't want to say been spoiled because they really appreciate great football but they've had an opportunity to watch great offenses and great quarterback play for a long time. Pass is caught. There's the record the franchise record for receiving yards in a game is Demarius Thomas. He's got to be looking at these Cardinals defenders Cardinal defenders have to be saying enough <laughs> you guys good yet or you want to keep going I was gonna say hey when are you going to take 18 out of the game while you're at it so is Brock Osweiler you got to be saying what does it take to get into a game well not 21 point lead with three minutes to play I guess oh, 20. good play made by one of the linebackers that's Kevin Minter Ronnie Hillman second down coming up there's Brock they say he has really made a lot of progress but you know that's like making progress on the driving range <laughs> go to the first tee it's the different story well it, it's going to be interesting when when and if he ever gets an opportunity to be at the helm you know, he's six eight and you know they always criticize the young quarter or the short quarterbacks but you don't know of many guys six seven and six eight that have had much success in this league either Nick Foles is pretty close I think he's six six I mean Osweiler is like the new Jim Sorge <laughs> all those years yeah. in Indianapolis number 17 that that's the number he wears he wears 18 with two minutes left he leads by 21.
If Manning throws for a first down here, he'll have a new career high. The passing yards in a game. Blue 20. Third and 11. Gonna keep it. Gonna throw it. Pass is caught. Was he in bounds? It's Sanders, and it's a catch. And a new career high for passing yards in a game. At least at the moment, it's a catch. That's close. 13 yards, which would give Peyton 479 in the game. But I don't know that that left foot's down. No challenge, so it'll stand. We're inside two minutes. It would have to be Booth initiated. And a new career high. And now four touchdown passes shy of Brett Favre as Peyton Manning. He had four today. He started at 499. So while that graphic looked pretty, he's actually at 503. Second and eight. I don't want Arians to get scared that he's not going to be able to get on the charter and go back. Like he said, if he breaks Brett Favre's record in this game, I'm not getting on the plane. You can say what you want about Peyton. Believe me, we've said a ton. But this defense, I will maintain, they fought as hard as they could until they just ran out of guys and gas. Well, I, I, you know, I thought so, too. And then you look at the numbers on what Denver was able to do. But they moved the ball. And then, like I said, they, they were able to get off the field. If they had gotten some help from their offense, you know, this game looks entirely different. But trying to hold up against this group for that long, just impossible to do. For the first time this season, John Fox's club puts together two strong halves. That had been one of the storylines coming in. They started slowly in the second half, but then they took off, and they're starting to look, Troy, now with a healthy defense, and now with Welker back, and Demarius Thomas doing his thing, and Peyton Manning. They're starting to look a lot like the team last year, maybe inching toward being even better. Well, we saw today them get back to what they did all of last year. That's the three wide receiver sets. Don't commit so much to the run. Throw the ball, put the ball in Peyton Manning's hand, and he played brilliant. He really did. How about that long career that started in 98? He's got a single game passing record. Peyton Manning does. They were celebrating from the start here in Denver as they saw history. Manning and the 500 touchdown club back to wrap up. After.